Cancer. Hello, Cancer. We are going to talk a little bit about the havoc that Uranus and Pluto wreaks in your chart. And uh, Jewel and Paradox brought up a comment here today, and I'm really happy they did so we can go down into the meatiness of what these two planets are doing. Now, each and every month, I try to touch upon it a little bit, but I don't want to get into it too deeply every single month. And why is that? Well, it is because uh, Uranus will take seven years to go through this area of your chart. Pluto will take 13 to 15 years through your chart in the very same area. So we can not just become repetitive, but the thing is, is that they are grand awakeners. They're shape shifters. And I'm going to go more in detail about that. However, though, it's on a month-to-month -month basis. I try to stay positive, focus on the other transits going on so that I can motivate and uplift you because we need to have some good goals and targets ahead of us. Now, that said, yes, underlying these day-to-day, month-to-month transits of the uh, personal planets, which transits really quickly around the chart, let's talk about Uranus first, which takes seven years, and then we'll get on to, to Pluto, 15 years in your chart. Now, for you Cancerians, uh, Uranus is the Grand Awakener. It gives us a wake-up call. It will shake loose anything now that can get you up and out of the rut. It will come either by unexpected change or by the changes that you choose yourself. Now, when we procrastinate and we know this little voice inside our head is saying we need to get out with something, we need to change or alter this, but then we become so convenient. It's like, nah, I won't do that now. I'll just push it ahead. All right, and being water sign, uh, you're very fluid in so many ways. So Uranus, when it comes around unexpectedly, when you haven't chosen uh, the timing of it, sure, it can bring about big life changes, and then they appear to be unexpected. And when that happens, I want you to ask yourself, go back, what did you experience in the months or in the last year prior to that? You can even go even further back and you will see that there has been underlying current nudging, kind of saying, okay, you could change this. You don't have to accept this situation. And then it's more like, well, no, not too comfortable. <coughs> Excuse me. Because we fall into the rut of convenience. You're, you're hanging on the other axis of Capricorn. Now, Capricorn is discipline. It keeps us on the track. It keeps our goals going, right? And we work, 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 work towards it. And that's discipline. Now, discipline we do want to have because why? That's a conscious choice. Now, whereas habit is totally autopilot robot. We just do what we do because it's comfortable, it's convenient. We don't want to change things. And see, the thing is about Cancerians ruled by the moon is it likes habits too. <clears throat> it's tied into the moon, what feels comfortable, that good feel and, and so forth. Not saying that it's lazy because it's hard for Cancerians to ever be lazy because of the discipline of Saturn that's pushing you from within. That's your opposite sign. But however though, it's those daily routines and habits. It's easier to sit in front of the TV or do something else and let the bigger picture kind of slide. Now, here comes Uranus. Uranus will have given you notice way before it really reaches the point of the sun in your chart. You may have Mercury there, you may have other planets there, but whenever Uranus touches upon a degree of a planet, this is the grand awakening. And then depending on the quality of the planet and which area, which house, that will determine exactly where what can be expected, and then of course what other transits or aspects that this Uranus on this point is receiving. So there's a lot of factors that go into it, and we can't do that every month. But I want to get into the meat of Uranus, why these changes are coming. Now, the unexpected can be good news too, by all means. We love Uranus for the uh, action it gives, the surprises, it rules surprises, the unexpected, the oh my gods, I, who would have thought, 
right? All of those good things. You win the lottery. Oh my God, well, that's Uranus right there. See, or, or you get a check or something. Unexpected. That's Uranus. The act of surprise. That's the upside of it. It's when you meet somebody when you weren't even looking. Out of the blue, here's this person. You fall deeply in love. You know, first, first sight, first love kind of unexpected. That is also Uranus. So we, we love the action, right? Here's somebody opening up a door, an opportunity uh, within work, and you hadn't even been thinking about, oh my God, here's an opportunity. Surprise, surprise, surprise. We love, and we can't live without Uranus, because then life would become totally boring, nothing to look forward to. It, it, it instigates action, okay? So, so it's like Mars, it's a higher octave in some way. Not totally, because Pluto is the higher octave of Mars. Um, <clears throat> Uranus is the higher octave here of Mercury. But however, though, it, it kicks us into gear. It's likened to the lightning bolt that we get, or, or the jackhammer that, that crushes the, the cement slab. Uh, with a bolt, everything just crashes. It's likened to the earthquake, <clears throat> where things were really nice and calm on the surface, and then, boom, a big jolt, and the tectonic plates shift. Uranus shifts us, see? And if we don't see it coming, sure, it's going to shock us. That's another key word of Uranus. Uranus shocks, for better or worse. Now, for this, here now, squaring your sign, and Jewel and Paradox is asking, why does it sound good for, for cancer? <clears throat> and then all this crap is happening. Well, the good, the upside of Cancerians here in 2013 uh, and even into half of 2014 is Jupiter is in your sign. Okay, it's that invisible hand coming down from heaven that even when you're going through hard times, you're being lifted. Maybe some of you have heard about that poem of footprints. If not, go look it up. It's very interesting. But see, so, so Jupiter is holding your hand. Jupiter is helping you. You may not notice it if you're in a lot of conflict. What you will see is just the conflict, right? But, but Jupiter is looking out for you, so we, we stick to those aspects here on a month-to-month -month basis and all the transits that Jupiter is receiving up to your sign so we can keep motivated, focused, so uh, we, we can stay with the flow of the law of attraction for the good things coming. Now, that does not take away the underlying vision that here is laying in your own tectonic plates because this is going to be with you all the way to March of 2019. So if you think it's going to be over soon, no it's not. So we still have another five years of Uranus doing this in your chart. So it's better to embrace it, accept it, be prepared for it, and actually open up and you be the one in charge. Meaning, when you hear the little voice say, it's time for change, create that change. But don't create change just for the sake of it because then you have no purpose or no goal. But you want to ask within your higher self, your spirit guides, ask the universe, what do you need me to change right now? What can I change to bring in new dynamics? Where can you use me the best? Where can I benefit others the most? Ask yourself these questions and you will start receiving trickling in answers from spirit and it will open up these doors for you and you won't really have the same type of havoc. <clears throat> it's when we resist, things will persist, right? And then we can push it until Uranus will come and push us off that cliff, you know? So yes, Uranus is the Grand Awakener. It helps us download larger thoughts, not just the linear mercurial thoughts, which goes from A to Z, lining out, communication, speech, in order to describe this picture over here, I would have to use a thousand words to get it all done. Uranus simply just sees it. It's a higher communication. It's power that's fantastic. And uh, when you start learning about the Uranian energies, the Uranian way, you will start inviting it. And in fact, you can even become addicted to it. Why? Because the liberation of Uranus. Liberating what? It liberates anything that has been oppressed. This is when we see Egypt. Suddenly the whole people there rise up and they, they have their thing going. That's Uranus releasing, liberating, 
freeing from oppression. Uranus opens up vast new areas in our mind, in our heart, on our life path. And we can't get there to those big new liberated rooms in our life if we don't clear out the clutter, right? And so it's like sometimes we, we just love to stuff because we're lazy. We, we stuff all our memories, for example. And then you get to a point where there's no more room for anything. No, I don't want to go out and do anything. I just don't have the energy. Why? Because you're so stuffed of memories, stuffed of experiences. See, shock sometimes help us to jolt us. To, it's like putting the cable on the battery in the car, you know, and we clear out the clutter. So Uranus can free us up to have new experiences so we can create new memories, so we can feel alive, be alive, be electric. See, that's another word, keyword of Uranus electricity, right? You are that bolt of lightning. You are that bolt to clear out the old. And so if you are having difficulties, you want to look at it and go, okay, what do I need to clear out? And how can I clear things out? See, this is where personal readings help a little bit more to know exactly <clears throat> where your Uranus is and what the transits, transits are hitting in your specific houses. But in the solar charts that we work with on a month-to-month -month basis, your Uranus is in the 10th house for career, so this is this where it may be where you see the most of these changes coming. <clears throat> where your path might be a little bit windy, or where co-workers may be taking different types of shifts and turns upon you, or where your employers might have big undergoing changes, structures that work, and then suddenly they got to let go of a whole lot of people, and maybe you included. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to lose your job, but you could, you could, you know, and, and that's what Uranus uh, is, is trying to show you. And uh, for these seven years, those of you that have been affected by it the most are those born within the first 10 degrees of the sign, okay? The rest of you, you're all feeling it, but you're not all getting it directly by hit yet. So uh, right now we got Uranus eight degrees. Uh, in Aries, this is squaring your sign. This is why it is difficult. You're being challenged from the outside. See, by conjunction, say for the Arian people, they have Uranus to their sign. So they're initiating change. That's different. But for you, you may not be looking for change and Uranus is coming at you, you know, pushing this energy upon you. And it's like, oh, what's going on here? You know, something's coming at me. So that is the big difference and this is what can stress you out big time those who will be affected next are those who are born from 10 degrees to 20 degrees uh, in cancer that is having your sun between 10 degrees and 20 degrees you will be feeling it and then the last part of it before we wrap it up here in 2019 it will be those of you born 20 degrees cancer to 30 degrees or say zero degrees into the next sign. So yes, you will all be feeling it and it's all about how do you deal with it? How can you roll with it? The best thing is to flow when you see it happening, embrace it. If you resist it, stand up against it, well, it will just, you know, become more of a challenge. So you want to listen to the music, do the dance. And Uranus here in your, your seventh, no, in your uh, tenth house, well, Yes, it's all about the values, the things that you've been working for, maybe for a lifetime. All the way up to this point, you might just see things now, you know, separating out. It also rules separation. But it only separates you from what no longer behooves you, okay? For example, relationships. Now, that doesn't mean you're all going to get separated and divorced. Those of you that are having uh, a difficult relationship, who's been living under a lot of pressure, a lot of dominance, control, well, yes, those of you will probably not survive this transit of Uranus. It will help you, in fact, to liberate, free yourself to get out of it, okay? Where you couldn't find the energy, the motivation, or, or even the guts to get up and out. Well, Uranus will give you guts, all right? You will simply just one day say, this is enough, I'm out. And that's what Uranus does. In a healthy relationship, it won't touch it. It will only go to the weakest link in any chain, okay? And it will 
expose it for you so you can see it so you're no longer in denial so that you can actually take some control on your own. So Uranus is good. It's looking out for you, even though you may be going through a very difficult time. And Uranus is squaring your relationship house. So you might feel that there's a lot of things going on there, especially because you have Pluto there. That's a separate uh, video that I will be doing, speaking about, sharing with you, so that you can know how to deal with it. Pluto rules transformation. Okay, so, um, but back to Uranus there. Uranus is opposing your fourth house. So what does that mean? Well, the fourth house is family, roots, the past. It's you within yourself, your own inner roots, traditional values and so forth. It, it's also where you live, how you live, real estate, property, those things. So when Uranus is opposing it, it's really making you look at where you live and how you live. Is it acceptable or is it unacceptable? If it's acceptable, Uranus won't touch it. Uranus doesn't touch anything that is good and acceptable. It will only add to it with all the good aspects, those surprises we spoke about. If it's not acceptable and it's been something that's been irritating, annoying, kind of boggling you down, stressing you out, well, it will help you. If you're not going to change it on your own, Uranus one day may knock on your door and say, time to change, time to move, right? And this axis between the home and career, well, maybe some of you will find out that you will be traveling due to a career change. Maybe you'll move to a different city, different state, different country. For example, that's one way it can work out. Going over to Pluto, Pluto is also a transpersonal planet. And what are transpersonal planets? Well, all the planets and the inner solar system up to Saturn are personal planets. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. It rules our daily consciousness. It's those things we work with. We see it, we feel it, and experience every single day in our conscious life. Now the transpersonal planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, you can add in Chiron too. Now, they work more in the subconsciousness, the higher consciousness, uh, you don't really, unless you're very conscious and aware, uh, spiritually, you will see how these influences work with you also on a daily basis. But they move so slowly because their orbit around the sun is so slow. They don't come with things right overnight. Now Uranus can bring something happening just like that, but the orbit takes 83 years, 84 years. And Pluto will take 165 years around once. So we only get a little slice of our chart, a little portion of our life where these planets are going to be focusing on. Now, if we live 84 years, we will have one full return in our chart so we can experience how Uranus works in these different areas. Now, with Pluto, we only get a couple of areas in our chart where it helps us grow, mature. And actually, it's very karmic because what is time anyway if we move out of linear time? Linear time is like past, present, future. Now we can extend that past to past lives and the present and then the future and future lives, but it's all linear. But see from a tripolar point up here, the past, the present, and the future, it's all one. So spirit or cosmos doesn't really care what the past is if we're talking 10 years or 10 lifetimes ago. So Pluto helps us accumulate and work through and process a lot of our old karma. It brings things to finality and then it starts new beginnings. Now in the past, before we were aware of Pluto, say all these millennia ago, well we didn't have the power, the understanding, the comprehension of uh, to how to die and rebirth ourselves while we were conscious. We could have coped with a very difficult situation throughout a lifetime because there was no way out. We couldn't use Uranus to separate from it, divorce ourselves from it. We were stuck. We only had consciousness of the Saturn. Saturn binds, right? And it controls and it holds down and it's karmic. We had to stick to the conventions at the time. No separation, no divorce. So, you know, that doesn't mean that everybody who actually physically left the Earth plane left happy and blissful that they had happy lives. No, there was no other way out. They physically died, many of them in young age. 
now that we have the consciousness of processing Uranus Pluto and also bringing in Neptune we're not going to talk about Neptune today but when we can bring in the process of these transpersonal planets we can shift through and speed through old karma we can actually experience and some of you have and that those of you who have you know exactly what I'm talking about the experience of having several incarnations in one embodiment in one lifetime. Now what does that mean? That doesn't mean you died in rebirth or you had an error death experience. Uh -uh. But just the very thing that you can transfer from one country to another. That the old country kind of died away from you. You're in a new country and here's this whole new karma coming up. And then you might move to a third country. In the past we were born, we lived and we died in that very same little village and we, did ha we had no other experiences. Here we can go from one uh, relationship to another, to a third. We get to experience, we, we, we accelerate our consciousness, accelerate our emotions. We, we, we have a, many new beginnings, middle part and endings, and then we start again. Millennia passed, you had one chance and that was it. So everything was in a slower motion. Today we're in accelerated. We speed up as we speed up our karma. We meet up with several past life lovers, so we don't just have one, and we complete that karma. You know, because we're living in the time of ascension. This is our consciousness rising, and we're clearing our past. Not just our past in this life, but we're clearing our past way back. See? And so these transpersonal planets are helping us to catch up. Will there be a couple of challenges <clears throat> along the road? Yes, there will. But it's all about how you embrace it, experience it. That's what it's all about. Can you do that or will you resist it? When we resist, it persists. So it's all about learning how to let go and let God gracefully. You see it coming in, there's this ending, let go, let God, because it's not the end. This is only showing that this little phase is over because behind it in comes something new that you don't see yet, but the universe sees it. You know, you're down on this linear level, past, present, future, so you don't know. But from up here, your higher self can see what's coming up ahead, right? As it can look back to the past. And the more you grow consciously, through meditation, however you do it, the ascension of the mind and spirit, the higher you go up, the more perspective you get to see. You will see what is up ahead. You will even have help from your future self. Now, what does that mean? Uranus can give you insights on it because Uranus is the planet, the only planet that works, uh, that orbits backwards. So it opens up different channels and synapses in our mind now, getting help from your future self. Have you ever experienced that you, you were in a challenge and thinking, well, actually, I wanted to leave that, which you probably would have for anybody else. But here's this soulmate, and you don't let it go. Why? Because that little voice says that down the road I know that something's going to happen there. Because that karmic book between you, that chapter isn't over and done yet. But now I'm getting into a whole different thing, a whole different video. But let me just complete it, though. So you have this little voice saying, hang in there, hang in there. Now, you would never have put up with that type of energy just for anybody. You would probably turn your back and walk away long ago. But that little voice saying, hang in there, where you develop more endurance and patience. Well, that is a, that's the mark of a karmic, spiritual soulmate, maybe even twin flame. Uranus helps you to get through that because you're communicating with your future self. When you get all these deja vus,